But the United States and its European allies still haven't learned the lesson. What are we doing in response to what's going on? Instead of backing off, we're doubling down. We put economic sanctions on them, on the Russians, significant economic sanctions. We're talking about stationing troops in Eastern Europe that heretofore we've not had there. The U.S. Congress would actually like to arm the Ukrainians. You think the Russians are just going to stand there and let this happen? This is not my understanding of how great powers act. Great powers are very sensitive about their security. And when they think they're in real trouble, they tend to lash out. And this is a country with nuclear weapons. You do not want to put Russians in a situation where they feel like they're in desperate straits. You better be very careful pushing them around. But the United States doesn't think that way anymore, and it basically takes the Europeans along with them. So we're continuing to double down, and people are enthusiastic about the fact the Russians are suffering. And they're saying, well, I bet the Russians will throw up their hands and will live happily ever after. I would not bet much money on that. This one could get really ugly. Now, many Europeans think this is a good thing because they think that means that the Americans will stay in Europe, right? That NATO will be refurbished. It'll have a second life, maybe. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But in my opinion, this whole situation is having very negative consequences. First of all, you now have a situation where Russia on one hand and the West on the other hand have terrible relations. Up until February of this year, the Russians and the Americans and the Russians and the Europeans actually had reasonably good relations. They were not great, but they were reasonably good. Those relations have significantly deteriorated. And why is this bad for the West? First of all, we need the Russians on Syria. They've been very helpful on Syria. As many of you know, it was the Russians who pulled Barack Obama's chestnuts out of the fire in August 2013 on the Syria crisis involving chemical weapons. We need the Russians on Iran. We need the Russians on loose nuclear weapons or loose nuclear materials. We need the Russians on exiting Afghanistan. The Russians are important players to us. We need their cooperation. It's going to be increasingly difficult to get them to cooperate with us. This is a terrible situation. Right? So what do you have here now? What you have is a situation where in Asia you have a rising China that is sure to become, in my opinion, an adversary of the United States and of Japan. And in Europe you have a Russia that heretofore had quite friendly relations with the United States that has also basically become an adversary. In the early Cold War, excuse me, in the early post-Cold War period, the United States was by far the most powerful state on the planet, and it had good relations with both Russia and China, and China was nowhere near as powerful then as it is now. What's happened over time is that China is rising, and if it continues to rise, it will eventually be even more powerful than the United States. China's rising, and China and the United States have very testy relations, which are likely to get much worse, and the United States and Russia have bad relations. This is why people are now talking about a multipolar world. 